You know, we come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. That's the only way we got this far. Some people may think that they did it on their own word power, but I can tell you, as a living witness, it's because we come this far by faith. Can I get a witness?
Lord, to come into your house and worship you in spirit and in, in truth, dear Father God. For Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. For Lord, you are worthy of all of our praises, dear Father God. And we thank you, dear Father God, for all what you have done for us, Lord. Dear Father God, as we have been through this week, Lord, you have been with us the whole time, dear Father God. In and out of danger, Lord, trouble on every corner. But dear Father God, you have kept us, Lord. And we come, Lord, this morning to celebrate you and to worship you, dear Father God. We come this morning, Lord, to be filled with your word, dear Father God. We come this morning to hear from you, Lord, a word that's going to bring about a change in our life, dear Father God, that is going to fill us, Lord, again, to go out and to do the kingdom work, Lord, to make disciples of all men. Dear Father God, we thank you for the blessings which you have bestowed upon us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your comfort and your peace and your rest, dear Father God. And Lord, we come this morning to glorify your holy and righteous name. Dear Father God, we forever give you name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Amen.
history and also for Father's Day presentation. Good morning. Good morning. It's such a blessing to stand before you today with such an eloquent backup here. I'm just excited here. Today we have a dual celebration and we're going to begin with celebrating fathers. When I woke up this morning, yes, my mind was on Jesus, but I also thought about my dad. And 27 years ago on Father's Day, we funeralized my dad here at Carrie's. However, I should not be thinking about the moment he passed or his funeral. There's so much more to be thought about, his life. And while the fact of his passing is significant, I remember my dad, and so should you. Let's not cherish the moments of the passing. Let's remember the time you spent with your dad. Some of us are a little older than others and see people like Mrs. Love and Mrs. Moore. They remember Mr. Collins when he caught them doing something wrong down there in Lane. And then there are others of us who remember going over to the wagon wheel when you weren't supposed to mm -hmm. and your dad caught you. And then there are those of us who have moments of memory of his laughing, of his bad jokes, of his bad dress, and just fun spent with dad. Let's remember his silly jokes, his generosity. Let's remember how he smiled when you gave him one more necktie that he knew he was never going to wear. Mm. Let's just remember the lessons he taught, the wisdom he gave, and it is up to each of us to pass that wisdom on. So today, in memory of dads, those of you who are dads, please stand. Those of you who act like dads and fill the gap, please stand. Mm. To you we say, thank you for your sense of responsibility. Thank you for your silly jokes and your poor dress. We thank you for the love you give your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grands. And as you leave the, leave the sanctuary today, we have a small gift, and it is a cell phone holder that attaches to your vent in your car so that you can be connected to your children and your family who love you so very much. Amen. Happy Father's Day, Carrie's Day. Amen. And at this time, I want to thank all of you who dressed so appropriately today and to the choir who gave such a beautiful rendition of Lift Every Voice. Thank you, Reverend Brown. Amen. Because we're about to celebrate Juneteenth. And I'm going to ask Frederick, Cameron, and Kyra to come to you in their own special way. We're going to begin with Frederick. Good morning. Good morning. Have you ever dreamed of getting a special car or a house or video game? Were you disappointed? when you didn't not get it right away or it or when it was promised how do you feel when you wish, wishing for some it and ne it never seems to happen Frederick's question to you is, have you ever been disappointed when you didn't get the video game, the car, or that special toy that you wanted, or the dress? Were you ever disappointed by that when it didn't come in on time? Sometimes our dreams are deferred. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, or fester like a sore, and then run? Speak, young man. Does it stink like rotten meat? 
Or crushed and sugar over like a syrupy sweet. Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? In 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation to officially announce that all slaves in America should be free as of January 1st, 1863. However, it was not until 1865 when U.S. Army Major General Gordon Granger went to Galveston, Texas with 2,000 federal soldiers to let the slaves and slave masters know the slaves are free. Two and a half years later, the sad part of all of this is that the slave should have been freed two years before. How would you feel if he finally got something you've been hoping for your entire life? Freedom, only to realize your dream was deferred. So that's why we ask, what happens to a dream deferred? I, I just can't tell you how proud I am of these children. And this is our legacy. Right. And it carries our responsibility is to make sure that they have more opportunities like this because these children are the ones who are going to carry us through. So thank you for always being patient. It's not Coleman and Jeans, it's Carrie's Baptist Church. So we thank you, so, so, Sister Conquest. Thank you for your help. Amen. God bless God. Come on, everybody, let's get up a half clap of praise. Come on, give me a half clap of praise. Like it's over a thousand of them. I can relate. Dreams deferred. And I'm not going to take too much time, but I just want to say something. It's Father's Day, so I got a moment. It's 20 seconds. There's been a lot of dreams, a lot of things that I desire. That were deferred, but I thank God that He deferred them because they were probably not for me. And so, being that I thought that they were for me, I thank God that what He did for me was for me. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise.
God will fix it. I will fix it for you. Yeah, I'll tell you, God can. God can. I know he will. God will. God will fix it. Yeah, will fix it. he'll fix it for you. Yeah, I said God can. I know God can. God can. I know that He will. God will. God will fix it. Yeah, God yeah. Fix it for you. you. Someone sick in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Doctors done all they could do. All you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. My God will see you through. Just like Moses gave power in the rod. I'm here to tell you there's healing in the word of God. God can. I know that he will. God will fix it. God can. God can. I know that He will. God will. God will fix it. God will fix it. Fix it for you. Yeah. I wanna know that He can. God can. I can tell you that He will. God will. God will fix it. Yeah. Just like the lady with the issue of blood, God can. God can. She'll tell you God can. God can. Blind man on the side of the road, God can. he'll tell you God can. God can. Come on, Abraham. God provided you with the lamb. And I know he can. God can. Do you know about old Joe? God can. He waited, waited on the Lord. God can. Just to tell you, God can. God will fix it. Yes, he'll fix it. God will fix it. I know God will fix it. God will fix it. Hear you when you call. Catch you when you fall. Get on your knees and pray. You gotta let God have His way. Cause He'll fix it. God will fix it. Yes, He'll fix it. God will fix it. God will fix it. God will. Yeah. God will fix it. All you gotta do is pray. God will fix it. And I know you fix it. God will fix it. I know you fix it. God fix it. 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 God can. Know that he will. God will. God will fix it. God will fix it for you. I tell you, God can. God can. I 
know that he will. God will. God will fix it. God will fix it for. Yeah, he'll fix it for you. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, man, God will fix it. God will fix it. And he'll fix it for you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Good, good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Before I get started with the word for God, I want to bring Sister Jean, uh, chairman of the anniversary committee. She wants to make a brief announcement about, yeah. I'd like you to do it, Jean. Sister Jean, if you will. <laughs> Amen. You notice how I passed that on. I just want to make sure I was clear on that. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Good morning again. Praise the Lord. God will fix it. Amen. And he'll do it for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, uh, I want to join uh, the, uh, the young people and Sister Jean, and they said Happy Father's Day, and I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, amen, as well. And I love that piece about Juneteenth, amen. What a powerful thing that we need to continually uh, to be, uh, 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 continually to emphasize how important our freedom uh, was and is and as we continue to what fight the what good fight amen we're in the good fight amen so it continues to do that so again happy juneteenth i hope each one of you would celebrate it in some kind of a way that uh, acknowledge uh, all the things that our foreparents went through amen somebody amen amen well uh, I want to uh, begin with a, uh, a reminder of a little tune that keeps ringing in my head. It says, Hallelujah, Salvation, and Glory. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Salvation, and Glory. Hallelujah to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is the Lord our God is omnipotent. Our Lord our God, He is wonderful. Come on now, Hallelujah, salvation and glory. Honor and power to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. One more time. Hallelujah, salvation and glory. Power and honor to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Somebody said mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. Clap your hands for the Lord our God. And this message that the Holy Spirit is given me is for all people, especially fathers, especially sons, especially daughters, and for those who are wandering and stayed away from home too long. But first, let us pray. Father God, we pray right now in Jesus' name for preaching and teaching power with clarity, with conviction, and with boldness. 
And my brothers and sisters, if you will remember this in Isaiah 40, verse 8, it says, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. Amen. Amen. The word of God stands forever. The word that the Lord gave to me today is coming home. I'm coming home. Amen. And before we get into the scripture that's going to be found in Luke chapter 15, verses 17 and 20, and Luke 15, 28 and 30. I want us to look back over our lives, fathers especially, husbands especially, and look back as we look back at our children as they've grown up in church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Oliver and Brother Oliver, for bringing your children, your grandchildren, and even your children's word in this house. Amen. Not only them, but a lot of us have children that have grown and gone, and, and some of them are wondered off. Some of them are still frequently come back once in a while. And we, we, we are praying, Lord, Lord, bring them back home. Bring them back home. And in this particular scriptures today, you will find that very familiar scripture, passage of scripture dealing with Luke chapter 15 and uh, the two sons. One was a prodigal son and the other one was uh, just angry, really, because he felt that he was left out of the blessings. But you will see today that both of them needed salvation. Both of them need mm -hmm. to come back uh, and remember who their father is. And as we look back over our lives again, we can see how we had disparity and we had separation at one time because our children after they get 10, 13, maybe even seven now, uh, they get to size their stuff. They start feeling like they all that and that they can talk to you any kind of way. And in the sitcoms of television, you find that uh, children are in control. They're telling the parents what to do. Uh -oh. They're telling the parents uh, to shut up. They're telling the parents you're going to wear this, not that. So we have that going on in our culture today. We got children taking over. Amen. And, and, and there is no uh, control. And the parents just say, hey, uh, we, you got to put them in time out or we got to uh, just allow them to express themselves. Amen. Amen. Allow them just to express themselves because, you know, you don't want to stump. You don't want to stop their uh, social abilities and their, their attitudes, uh, uh, and they want to express themselves. But again, as we, as we see in this, in this story here, as we get into it, we're going to see uh, that this father uh, did turn over the inheritance. He asked for it, and he turned it over. Okay. Amen. Amen. So, uh, you know, and, but he kept a welcoming uh, path. He kept a, a welcoming, uh, open arms uh, for him to return. And as we look back at those children of ours, uh, you know, I have one present today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But as we, as we look back uh, over our, our strong-willed children, uh, uh, they, they feel that they have passed the age of discipline and guidance and instructions. But again, uh, we don't shut the door. As a parent, my wife and I, she's here today. As parents, we don't shut the door. That's right. We keep a door open, even though we want to shut the door. I even had said that one time, hey, you go out, <laughs> this door will be closed. And of course, uh, my little Rose stood up and said, no, you ain't. Amen. Amen. 
No, you ain't. I mean, you know, you know, I run the house, of course, but uh, she's the Nate and I'm the head. That's right. Okay, and then the, the, the head can't do nothing without the what? The Nate. Amen. So I'm gonna catch that on the way home. But again, but again, uh, we found out that we got to uh, be like this uh, this dad and this story that he left the door open. He left the guy. He didn't. He he heard about him. Uh, he got reports about this prodigal. He was doing everything he was big and bad enough to do. And he was just acting a fool, if you will. Amen. I'm not calling nobody a fool in here. But he was acting a fool. Bad attitude. Uh -huh. He had a bad attitude. He just thought that, hey, I got friends, I got money, I got presty, I got all the women, wine, and songs that I want. But you know what? Money has a way of... Uh, 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 slipping through holes in your pocket. You ever yeah. had a bunch of money one day and you broke the nakes? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I experienced that. And I wonder why I said, I just got paid for Friday. Uh -huh. What happened uh, uh, to my money? And I found out that I, uh, my dad used to say, always do something constructive. Get yourself a haircut, boy. Uh, just don't uh, popcorn and movie and, and, and just go out and celebrate. And within a day or two days, you are broke. And then you, gotta, you, you go to work kind of uh, grumbling. But again, let's get into the scriptures, because I believe the scripture is going to say it better than I can say it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as we look at these scriptures today, we'll see uh, Luke 17. When he finally came to his senses. Amen. Amen. So, you know, we pray about that. Because sometimes it takes some children and some folks longer to come to their senses. They got to go through something. Amen. You got to go through to get through. Amen. So you find that they, they take a little longer. And you've been praying for 28 long years or whatever it is. And you, you say, when is this person uh, going to come to their senses? My mommy said this way. She said, uh, I got more sense than my tip of my finger, pinky, uh, than you got in your. And my mom used to say that because a lot of times I would think I'm so big and bad that I know the right way to go. And she was trying to guide me to the right way to go. And I found myself making foolish mistakes because I didn't listen to mama or daddy. Amen, somebody. Anybody else found themselves going the wrong way because they would not listen to their wife? Amen. Or their a husband, because they thought they were headlong and they thought they were right, so they went on. Amen. So again, let's go ahead and look at these scriptures. I want to start a little bit with the uh, verse, uh, praise the name of the Lord. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate, and I want it now before you die. Mm. Isn't that something? You know, a lot of us uh, 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 that are wise, I believe, would set up a will. Uh, so they have a will, uh, uh, estate, a plan for their, uh, for their you know, because we are going to leave here. Uh, you know, a lot of us are in our 90s, but uh, even 90, uh, people leave at 90, 95, and some people leave even younger. And so you need to, uh, just to plug in, you need to have a will. Uh, my, my daughter convinced me that I need to have a will. So finally, I got that will done. I thank God for that. Uh, but the reason I said that, because here this young man, he is telling his dad that, hey, I want my inheritance today. I want it now. So the father agreed. You know, uh, I guess, you know, when you look at the scriptures, you can't see all the hidden things in the scripture, and you don't know how many times he asked. He might have asked two or three times. Maybe the dad just did it immediately, as the scripture seems to indicate. But maybe he had pounded and pounded, and his dad said, okay, all right, you want to try your wings? Okay, here's your inheritance. But look at this a little bit further. It says that when he gave him that inheritance, a few days later, he didn't wait long. 
But you notice also in those scriptures that he divided the her inheritance, mm -hmm. and we don't get to that angry son, but he divided the inheritance to both of the boys. That's right. The one that stayed home and the one that left. See, how soon they forget. Hey, man, you'll see that later. But so anyway, as he uh, went, uh, his son packed all his stuff, and, and he wasted all his money in wild living. That's verse 13. About the time his money ran out, uh -oh. see that? <laughs> Your money ran out. He said, uh, uh, when he, his money ran out, he found himself in a famine. He found himself uh, slopping hogs and slopping pigs, if you will. And the young man became very hungry. So, you know, when you don't have no money, you can't get no food. And so he found himself in a starving situation. So again, as we look further into the scriptures, we find that he came to his senses. And he says, he remembered that at his father's house, even the servants had more food and they had food to spare. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I'm around here wallowing in a hog pen and my father has servants that live better than I do. So he came to his senses, and, and as he was going, his father, if you will, his father was always looking over the horizon. He was always looking around that, uh, that hill, that mountaintop. He was always with a door open, looking for his uh, son to come home. And you know, some of us that maybe have uh, prodigals out there, or grandkids, or, or neighbor's kids, or friend's kids, uh, we don't need to throw stones at them. We need to pray That's for them. Right. We need to pray that that child, well, he left in the uproar. He stole his mother's money. He crawled around and, and tried to steal her car keys and all crawling under the, uh, on the floor around the bed trying to find out where she keeps her money. Uh, hey, good riddance. No, don't say good riddance. Because when you look at yourself, uh, I look at myself, I too have made bad decisions. And my mother always kept the door open. Amen. So I encourage you to keep the door open for your children, your children, children. But as I want to flip it a little bit, because this is Father's Day, and the greatest father of all is who? God, God the Father. We call him our Father who art in where? In yeah. heaven. Amen. So when you flip this around, we want to look at the earthly fathers. Amen. Because the earthly fathers, uh, believe it or not, they make some dumb decisions. Amen. And, and they, they step out of their, uh, of, of, out of their marriage. They step out of their home. And they go out and they are so busy thinking about their man cave that they forget they got children to feed. That's right. And they rather have that man cave loaded with all the video games and all the uh, big screen TVs and all this stuff. And then uh, the, the, the wife is struggling trying to put food on the table. I'm just going to talk about you men just for a minute. Uh, because we got to realize that even though this uh, story is about a son, it's also about a father. You know, our fathers can, uh, can be prodigals as well. We can go off on the deep end. Talk, sir. Hey, man, we can, we can think that uh, as long as I uh, put food on the table, as long as I got a job, I don't have to care about the kids. Let her take care of it. As long as I bring the bacon home, uh, I don't need to pray. Let her pray. I don't have to be the spiritual leader in the home. Uh, hey, shut up. Let her, let, him, let her pray. So. See, and see what we got to realize is God called us men to be the spiritual leaders of their home. Amen. Amen. And so we find that these fathers are, are wondering and they wayward and all they think about is, uh, uh, hey, you got my meal on the table? <laughs> Where's my food? Amen. And we find that we are hurting. And guess who's looking? That little child over in the corner, they looking at, they looking for an example. And when they see their father act a, you know, act a fool, when they see him doing that, they say, wow, and my mother has to put up with this. And sometimes that bitterness rolls over down to the next generation. Fathers, they are watching you. 
they're watching you. So again, this, this, this story is so, is so much important for fathers, sons, daughters, and anyone else. That's right. Because we all have these tendencies to let, let go and, and let the woman do it all. Amen. We got to stop that. We got to do better than that. So again, as this father, this is what you call a good father. So we got fathers that are what? Uh, bad, good, and ugly. And all through the Bible, you will find different fathers that did a lot of foolish things. Eli, even Samuel. You would think of Samuel the prophet, that he would raise his children, that he would pass on all that God had taught him, and he would pass it on to his two boys, and yet his boys were into filthy lucre. They were into uh, corrupting the church, the temple, if you will. Mm -hmm. And Eli, oh yeah, his sons were so bad, uh, God had to kill him on the spot. That's right. Amen. <laughs> and if Eli, a prophet of God, if he, a preacher, a, 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 a minister, uh, if he had passed it on to his children, maybe they wouldn't have been so bad. And then sometimes you just got a bad seed anyway. <laughs> you just can't save them all. <laughs> Some of them just going to go wild and do what they want to do. But keep the door open. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Let them know that you can come home. <laughs> Amen. And then you got these uh, ugly fathers. Uh, you know, they, they're so ugly. Oh, they're thinking about uh, where can they get their next bottle of liquor, their next hit of drugs. They don't care about uh, how the children are doing. They don't care if they have diapers or food. They don't care. They're so ugly, and they're just into themselves. Hmm. And so we got to realize that uh, that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, lifestyle triples on down to the children. You say, well, no, they don't know what's going on. They're so, uh, they so uh, saturated in their video games. They don't know what's going on. But yes, they do hear those voices. They hear those screams in the night. They hear that mother crying and weeping all night long. They hear that. And so I come to tell you that, yes, we got prodigal sons, we got prodigal daughters, and we got these wandering fathers as well. That's right. Amen. Amen. And God is saying we got to fix that. And it starts at home and it starts in the church. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. So again, as we as look at those last set of scriptures, I won't be much longer here. I want to look at those last set of scriptures. And it talks about, uh, talks about that son. Uh, yet when this son of yours come back, this is that uh, son that stayed home. You know, sometimes uh, the enemy works both ways. Well, actually, he, both, he works both ways on each end, and then he works in the middle. So he was trying to destroy the relationship of that father with his other son that was faithful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can be so faithful, you become bitter sometimes. Because you think that, now, I've been here all this time, that boy has been out there throwing away money, wine, women, and song, and now he's coming for a handout. He wants to come back home. And the brother's saying, hey I, hey, I think he ought to go back where he came from. I mean, hey, Dad, you didn't even give me a little young goat to, uh, the, 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 uh, to celebrate with my friend. And now this, and so the older brother was angry. He was tore up from the floor. He was just sick and tired of his dad catering to this guy. And you know what his dad did? As soon as he said, oh, come off the, rise, off the horizon, he all of a sudden, he recognized his son because he'd been looking for him every day. He probably went out there twice a day. So I praying that my son would come home. That's right. And then when he found the son, the brother couldn't, his son, the prodigal couldn't, couldn't even get the words out. Before his father said, hey, get the robe, get the ring, get the fatted cat. I mean, he was just, he, he, he ignored what he was saying. He said, dad, I don't want to be a son. I want to be a servant. But God in his infinite wisdom. Yes, sir. God in his infinite wisdom. He wants his children to come back home. Yeah. And when you come back home, he gives you the best. Yeah. He shower you. He don't, he forget your sins. 
He cast your sin as far as the east is from the west. He forgets your sin. Somebody else might remember, or his brother remembered him. He remembered yeah, because he had put a posse out there, and he knew his every move. How did he know he was wine, women, and song? Somebody had to trace that dude. Somebody had to trail that guy. So he got the report before he got home. This brother's acting a fool. Mm -hmm. And you're going to welcome him back home? Send him back where he belongs. Mm -hmm. But his father, what did he do? He said, I'm going to put up my ring on his finger. Yep. I'm going to give him a nice robe. Yeah. We're going to have a feast. We're going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. but look at that angry boy. He was upset. And that's why I know, as we look at these scriptures, that salvation, salvation, deliverance, is for both of them. It wasn't just a problem. That boy, that young, that young boy needs salvation too. He needs deliverance. Because the devil wanted to take him and use him to destroy the family. Look what he said. The older brother was angry, wouldn't go in. His father came out and bagged him. His father came out. The same father that waited on every day looking for that prodigal to come home. He also was looking for his son to, to find forgiveness and mercy for his, for his son, his brother. But he was angry. But he replied, all these years. You can see, can you see the crocodile tears? He just laying it out. All oh, these years, I slaved for you, Dad. Uh -oh. And never once, never once, can you hear him crying out? Never once, you, you refused to do a single thing you told me to. And I, I mean, I never, I never did one thing that you didn't tell me to do. He was just pleading his case. He said, Dad, I'm your boy. I was there when you were, even when in your pain, when, when the other one boy was out there partying like a party animal. I was there for you, Dad. And then, and then he says, he says, and all that time you never gave me even one young goat. Do you know, my wife and I take a few vacations. And one of the time we were out there in a nice hotel and we were looking around and uh, do you know they always had these little, uh, uh, little uh, the safe and they got the little, uh, uh, Frigidaire, and they got this little stuff in the Frigidaire that you can get, that you can use. And the best place of these uh, high, uh, uh, star fives hotels, and they got all kinds of luxury little things in there. And uh, we went down to check out, and uh, we noticed our bill was extremely high. <laughs> and we said, uh, and, and, and Rose said, well, we didn't use none of that stuff. Hey, what's the problem? We didn't use that. He said, well, guess what? It was Daryl Fire. But if you didn't use it, it was your fault. It was Daryl Fire. And look at this product. I mean, look at this angry son. He's saying, you didn't give me that. His dad said, it was Daryl Fire. All you had to do is call your friends and let's have a feast. Let's have a party. You could have got the fattest cab. You could have had a party. You could have had time to enjoy. I didn't tell you work like a slave. He thought his father had demanded he worked like a slave, sweat night and day. See? And that's what's wrong. I'll get that one again. That's what's wrong with us sometimes. Uh, uh, when it says here in verse 30, yet when this son of yours come back after he's squandering your money on prostitutes, okay, you celebrate by killing the fattest cat. God, God wants to welcome you back home. He said, come on home. He said, I got the fattest calf for you. I'm not going to talk about your sin. I'm not going to talk about your mistakes. I'm going to forgive you, and I'm going to roll out the red carpet. That's the kind of God that we serve. And not only will he do it for the prodigal, he will do it for the one that stayed home. That's yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. He will do it for the one that stayed home. So as we prepare to close. Keep the door open. Keep the door open. You know, you say, well, they just young now. They ain't but eight, nine, ten years old. It's no, they have, I don't have no problem. But guess what? Keep on, keep on living. Sin has a way of knocking at your door. You got to be prepared to catch them doing something good and commend them. And when they're wrong, 
make sure you love them. Sure, you discipline them, but you make sure you love. The love is most of all. Amen. So, Father God, as we as did our best to rightly divide this word of truth, in verse 31, Luke 15, 31, his father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to, somebody said we had to. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. All of us remember that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound, to save a wretch like me. I once was blind, but now I see. So that's what God wants us to do. Just remember, it could have been me. If it had not been for the grace of God, so I would be out there, lost. Yeah. And never forget, yeah. I told my mom and I told y'all many times, she said, Raymond, give your life to Jesus. Yeah. I was about two weeks from going to Vietnam as an interested soldier. She said, Raymond, give your life to Jesus. I said, mama, please. I mean, I'm going out and fight a wall. What I need with Jesus? Amen. So what kind of craziness is that? But guess what mama did? She didn't say, well, go ahead and kill, get yourself killed. No, she didn't say that. She said, I'm getting my prayer band together, and we're going to pray for you. Here I am now. Amen, somebody. Amen. It was the power of prayer that saved me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's look to the Lord. As our pastor says, there is room at the cross. There is room at the cross. So I say to you, my brothers and sisters, if there are anyone, young or old, in their last quarter of life or just beginning life, if you don't know Jesus, Father's Day is a great day. Father's Day is a great day to give your life to Christ. Yes. Because his arms are wide open and he'll receive you just as you are. You say, well, let me clean myself up. Let me fix myself. No, uh -uh. if you could fix it, Jesus didn't have to, wouldn't have to come. We can't fix it. So is anybody in the house that wants to rededicate or, or give their life to Christ today? His arms are wide, stretch open, he said, come unto me, all of you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, thank you for your time to stay. I pray that each and every one of you will have a great Father's Day. Oh, I got a hand. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you come up front a minute? Amen. Deacon, we're going to pray for uh, Sister uh, Conquest, her son, that's your youngest grandson. Come right here in front of all of Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's pray for her. Amen. There's a particular issue. Praise the Lord. Reverend Staten. Yes. Amen. Let us uh, extend your hands to my sister here. Praise the Lord. You know, she is, uh, she's sad. She's weeping. She needs our prayer. Extend your hands. Amen. You know, I believe and believe in prayer. You know, you know, sometimes you can pray these prayers and it just gets to the ceiling and bounce off. Yes. So let's pray or believe in prayer. Yes. Amen. I believe in prayer. Praise the Lord. My sister will come. Dr. McIntosh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And as we we pray for her son, we want to pray for one of my friends. Her daughter was 
in an accident, car accident, the, the airbag imploded and she was pinned in and they had to rush her to the hospital. She was about 14 years old. Mother DeBrow, Amen. you need to pray for Tracy Slade. Tracy Slade? She was in a bad accident last night. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much. Anyone else, uh, Tracy Slade, we're going to lift her up as well. Yeah. Amen. We all, I mean, I need prayer. We all need prayer. Yeah. But sometimes we need it even more. My dear friend, Dan Cook. Cancel, cancel, amen. My Pray friend, Michael Ford. Amen. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You see it? Did you hear it? So we're going to be praying, believe in prayers. These are prayers. Uh, that we know that makes an impact with signs and wonders follow. Signs and wonders follow. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father God, in Jesus' name, we lift up my sister, precious grandson. Precious. We lift up all of those other names, Father, that yes. Sister yes. Tracy, the one that has cancer, the one that's going through so many of my, my, my my friend's daughter, uh, Amari, as she was in a car accident, and those that others that experienced car accident. Is there anything too hard for God? No. Amen. Are we going to believe God that God can yeah. fix this? Yeah. Reverend Brown sung this song with the choir. He can fix it. Now we got to believe that. So Lord, we believe right now in the name of Jesus that my sister's grandson would come out of that, come out of that, walking and leaping and praising God. Oh, yes, God can do it. Yes, he can do it. Yes, he can do it. God can do it. He can turn it around. Oh, yes, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon form against her. Yes, we believe it. We claim it in the name of Jesus. We speak healing. We speak deliverance. We say cancer ain't nothing too hard for God. Anything has a name, has a ne bow at the name of Jesus. Yes. We believe right now. And it's done. We claim it. We've done. Jesus has fixed it. And the next time we want to hear a praise report. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Yes. yes, Lord. We give you all the glory and the praise. If our God is a God that fixes it. We give him all the praise. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Clap your hands. Give him glory. Give him glory. Thank you so much, my sister. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my brother. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you please uh, stand with me as we get ready to leave this place? I want to also pray for our pastor as he is traveling uh, from South Carolina. He may be close to home now. I don't know, but we do want to lift him in the First Lady. And what a wonderful celebration. Two daughters uh, graduate and in a few days of hard, uh, one from college and another one from high school, I believe. And so we thank God uh, for our pastor and his absence and First Lady. Let's look to God. Amen, as we prepare to leave this place. Father God, we thank you so much for the word. We hope it came forth with clarity and conviction that all of us have been prodigals at one time. All of us need the door open. So Father, we thank you that this son, even this angry son, receive a revelation that my father really loved me and all I have to do, even with our Heavenly Father, all we have to do is ask. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be open. Seek and you shall find. Thank you for the word. Lord, as we leave this place, let us never leave your presence. God, our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, be with us all as we celebrate Father's Day. And as we celebrate the greatest father of them all, God the Father, in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 And amen. Amen. Go in peace.